What's going on YouTube Metal Complex here and today I've got an awesome uh, knife review slash overview for you guys. Uh, this is a Microtech Ultra Tech 2018 model with a contoured handles, a bronze finished uh, single edge blade and uh, M390 steel as you can see right there on the back of the blade. Um, this is not the knife I was referring to when I said I've got something really, really amazing coming to the channel. That video is down the road a little bit. This is still an amazing knife, and I do have a lot to say about it in positive light, so we'll go ahead and move forward with that. Let's go ahead and do the size comparison here. We'll start with the paramilitary. I'm sorry, Para 3. Para 3 comes in at 7 and a quarter inches overall. 3 inch blade, 2.75 inch cutting edge, 3.5 ounces. Manix 2 comes in at 8 inches overall with a 3.25 inch blade, 3 inch cutting edge, comes in at about 5 ounces. The uh, Ultratech comes in at 8.25 inches overall with a 3.4 inch cutting edge and weighs something like 3 ounces, I think, which is pretty amazing. Some sites will say 8.5 inches overall. I'd imagine that they are counting the glass breaker, but I don't count that because when I put my hand on it, I, I don't grip the glass breaker. So I suppose, however you want to look at that. Technically, overall length from the glass breaker to the tip is eight and a half. From the butt to the tip is eight and a quarter. So about the exact same length as NXM18 or ZT0562 or 0392 or 0393. Um, anyway, so how I ended up with this that video that I did on the Truidon uh, that Dave uh, submitted to the channel, I was playing with that and I thought, man, I miss these. These are so cool. I was kind of not super nice to OTFs on that video I did on the Lightning. I kind of viewed them as, or I kind of said they were novelties and then I kind of changed my mind and now I'm playing with this and I really like it. And I used to own that Combat Truidon and I love that thing. It was huge. It was like nine and like nine and a quarter inches, something like that big OTF from Microtech. It was also really expensive. Back then it was 400 bucks. Now it's like 465 for the base model. And so I couldn't justify carrying it back then. So I ended up trading it and selling it. And I've, I've missed it ever since. And uh, so after I played with that Truidon, the regular smaller one I just showed here recently, um, I thought, you know what, I'm going to get a Microtech for myself. And I've never handled an Ultratech and it seems like um, more of a justifiable everyday carry size OTF. Uh, they seem to come highly recommended. Um, I kind of feel like it's a knife I need to handle and play with and maybe keep. And so, of course, I, uh, when I began my hunt, you know, I, I saw that they were contouring these now, which made me really excited. Uh, and I also saw they were coming in uh, M390 steel and that they had this bronze finish. And I was like, ah, oh, cool. I want to, I want to try that. So if you remember again with that Truidon uh, video, you'll, you'll remember that I said if I was going to get another OTF, I would absolutely always get a double-edged blade because this is one of the only styles uh, of, of knives out there that you can carry that you can justify a double-edged blade because of how they deploy. It's a lot safer than a double-edged blade that would be a folding knife, um, meaning this way because you'd have to use your finger or something. You, you risk cutting yourself. Well, then I contacted the dealer because I was interested in their Spartan grind. Uh, and I said, you know, is it truly symmetrical? Do all the lines meet up? Um, because I, I would have to imagine that'd be really hard to do, even if they're machine made, to make everything perfectly symmetrical. And if I, I knew that if it wasn't, it would bother me. And these, these dealers I was talking with, they, they were real nice. They, they looked over all these, uh, these bronze Spartan blades for me and they said, no, you know, to be perfectly honest, not every line meets up. And I can't really blame Mic Microtech because you've got that line down the middle, you've got the fuller down the middle, you've got the line that, that extends out to the tip, then on the Spartan you've got technically four separate edges, tanto, or you've got two double, I'm sorry, you've got a double tanto edge, so you've got angle and lines coming out to those angles and then you have to get it right on the other side. That's super difficult. And I'm super nitpicky. So I don't blame Microtech. If that doesn't bother you, then I'm sure you'd be perfectly happy with one of their double-edged grinds, be it just the plain double edge or the, uh, the Spartan grind. But I decided to go with a single edge for that reason, because I knew these, these would come out perfect. And this one did. This, is, this one's just beautiful. Also, I have a tendency to want to put my thumb up here. And whether or not I actually end up doing that, doing that with this knife is uh, yet to be seen, but I, I knew that I wouldn't be able to do that uh, with a double-edged blade, and I would surely 
accidentally do that at least once and I would slice my finger uh, up and I, I would uh, be less likely to want to carry this. So in this configuration, which is a very classic configuration for the Ultratech, except for the bronze finish, I'm very happy with it. The blade is just awesome. Uh, you have this surprisingly thick, down to the tip, um, blade stock here. It's probably 0.13. Let me look at the Manix. Manix is 0.13. Yeah, it's probably 0.13, something like that. I could be wrong. You can go look at the specs on their website if you want to. And then you've got a, some nice belly. Uh, for it being not a very tall blade, it drops from a higher point. Really nice swedge or fuller, I'm sorry, really nice swedge up top, and then you've got this fuller or blood groove or whatever you want to call it, and then the flat extends out to here, which is what is uh, keeping the thickness nice and, and wide out there. Uh, just a really classy looking blade. It, it looks really nice, and it is screaming sharp. Uh, definitely, definitely, definitely very sharp right out of the box. Um, so I was very impressed with that. Fit and finish on this knife is absolutely perfect absolutely perfect every single line meets up i was so happy to see that got some stuff on there pocket lint from carrying this guy i do carry it yeah whatever uh but everything just looks great this contouring is awesome this matte finish on the anodized uh, 6061 t6 aluminum handles is great the bronze finish just looks excellent the camera is not going to do this bronze finish uh, justice it's got sort of a stone washed finish with this bronze treatment applied to it and in my light I can see the grind lines amongst the uh, stone wash marks you probably can't see it on the camera but it's really really nice the the light dances off this thing really uh, really well in the sunlight so again the camera's not going to do this justice if you are teetering on buying a bronze one and you're using this video as a, a means of uh, figuring out whether or not you want it definitely go for it do not judge it completely off this video it probably still looks okay, but it's really, really nice in person. The way that they apply this uh, this bronze finish is with heat. All the hardware is steel. It's not titanium. This isn't an anodization, or I'm not really sure what you call it, but I emailed Microtech about it, and I said, how do you guys, what do you guys do to get that on there? And the rep emailed back and said it's applied with heat. So I asked, you know, obviously my next question was, well, how well is it going to hold up over time? And she said, if you're going to use this for years and years and years, and uh, you're going to use it all the time, it's probably eventually going to wear off, which doesn't really come as a surprise to me. It's the same can be said about any DLC blade. If you're going to use it all the time, then it's probably going to wear off at some point. So that's fine. It especially doesn't concern me considering this is an M390 blade now. They still use LMAX, uh, but they also use M390. So check with the dealer before you buy one of these, which blade steel it is. But, but uh, I'm not really concerned with a finish on uh, M390 wearing off because I, I generally what I'm concerned with the most as far as um, aesthetics with a blade is whether or not it's going to corrode. M390, is it's very unlikely it will corrode being an 18% chromium steel, so not really worried about that. The bronze does extend all the way down to the, um, the uh, lanyard thing. I'm not sure what you call that. That's different. It's kind of this duck build thing they've cut a hole in for the lanyard. And then, of course, the glass breaker. And then it does have a uh, ball bearing there at the end. The hardware has been nicely bronzed. No, no spots that they miss there. Pocket clip looks great. As you can see there, August 2018. And then they put the serial numbers up here, which I kind of like. They, they took it off the handle. Now you just have the claw logo. They still have the banners all over the blade, but that's never really bothered me. This is a very classy looking knife. You know, it also absolutely looks like a weapon, but as far as these knives go, this is like the the nicest, classiest version of, of an OTF I've ever seen. So I, I really appreciate um, Microtech, uh, you know, making this knife looking really good. It's also way bigger in person than I would have thought. I mean, I knew it was eight and a quarter inches overall, but just with it being a thinner profile, I guess I just imagine more of a dainty knife. Uh, if you've never handled one of these and, and you're, you're worried about it not being substantial enough, then I can tell you right now um, that it's not going to, it's, it's not going to be the case. Um, these knives are, are definitely more substantial than I, I would have expected. Um, so, I mean, right when I got this out, I guess the thickness, hard to imagine dimensions from pictures. This is thicker than I thought, the blade is thicker than I thought, and the whole thing just appears to be larger. And on camera, it's probably still going to appear like a small knife. It definitely is smaller than my Combat Truidon, but it's substantial.
Um, it's because of that, I, I also believe it could probably ha uh, uh, stand up to some harder use than I originally imagined, too. This isn't going to be a knife that you're going to use as hard as a, uh, uh, a hinderer or um, any sort of other hard use, heavy quotes there, hard use folding knife, titanium frame lock or whatever, um, but tougher than I thought, definitely. Um, also, of course, with an OTF, God, that feels good. If you've never fired an OTF, especially a Microtech, it feels exactly like you would imagine. You push this up right there, it fires. There's a little bit of recoil. You pull it back and it sucks back into place, locks nice and hard. It feels really good. Very quality. There's no twang with Microtech. So on cheaper OTFs, when you fire it, there's that kind of metallic reverberation once the blade's deployed. You don't get that with Microtechs. And I really, really like that I just hear that initial clack and then that's it. Shake it. There's no rattle with these once these are deployed. In the out position, there's a little bit, but what that is, is it's a little bit of blade play. And that is to be expected, of course, with OTFs. I think everybody knows that by now. That's the nature of the beast with an OTF. You really don't want the tolerances, I would imagine. I'm not a switchblade maker. I would imagine you don't want the tolerances so tight on this OTF when it's locked out for there to be no wiggle. Because number one, that creates excess friction, which is not something you want with a blade that's riding on a rail system and is, is fired out with a spring. Uh, I would imagine there'd need to be a little bit of a of give in there so that everything functions properly, you know, especially if some debris does get in there. If it were super tight and there was debris in there and it, it got caught, it might really kind of bog this thing down, which is not something that you want. So, uh, but it is, it's close enough to where it, it appears to be almost perfect right there where it comes out. You can see there how perfect that is. It's very, very close. But not so close that you're getting friction marks on either side of the flat. You can see everything looks really good there. So I'm not getting rub marks. Really great. It also is perfectly straight out of the, uh, out of the handle. You don't have it kind of like veering off to one side, which is nice. Fit and finish is just excellent on these. I was really tough on OTFs in uh, my lightning video. I said that they were a novelty and they just, you know, attracted people that just want to carry a weapon. Yeah, they probably do. But um, there, there's plenty to be said in terms of utility for an OTF, which I said in the Truidon video. And that's that's really what made me want to buy this. Um, I like the idea of being able to simply pull this out of my pocket, deploy it, use it, and put it away. There's even less, you're even less likely to drop it than something as easy to manipulate as the uh, uh, the Para 3 or the um, Manix because there's just less repositioning of the hand and moving around to you know manipulate a lock it's just out in that's it it's super easy i love that um and this one you know i complain about the glassbreaker being pointy on the truidon they've fixed that they've long since fixed that but this one is just unbelievably easy to get in and out of your pocket and i can palm it down with one hand because it's a ball bearing it's not this sharp tip and then that pocket clip has plenty of retention in two different spots pull it out deploy it. it it really it honestly doesn't get much simpler than that um and so i really appreciate that i think i'm going to use this and i think i'm going to use it often yeah it's probably going to scare some people and um so you know that's that's going to be kind of left up to my decision as to whether or not it's appropriate to use it at any given time i always carry my little victorinox for situations where i might be in front of somebody who wouldn't appreciate me whipping out an eight an eight and a quarter inch switchblade to open a letter in front of them um so i, I carry that but i do love this i, I love the convenience of of having a, a knife that deploys this way especially one that's got an m390 blade and that just looks awesome this is such a joy to get out every single time um and I'm not concerned with the mechanism. You know, people say, well, the only downside to an OTF is that you've got more moving parts, uh, more friction inside of there, more things to fail. And that is true. But because of the way that these are built and put together, and you can watch videos where they're taken apart, the springs inside of here are in the resting position, both when it's deployed and when it's pulled down. The only time there's tension on the springs is when you're pushing this up. This is being is this is pulling itself back down because what I'm doing is I'm putting tension on the spring until it passes whatever latch releases the blade and then that spring you know it stretches and then pushes the blade out 
And then as I pull down, same thing, tension only here. And then once it's pulled back in, no tension. So while this thing is sitting dormant and not doing anything, there's no unnecessary wear on the knife. A lot of times, like with your classic uh, swivel guards and swing guards, those push button uh, uh, switch blades, when you lock the blade into place, there's there's a, a torsion bar or some some type of a, of a spring in there that's under tension while it's sitting, um, and it's only not under tension when it's out. So a lot of times, if you see like a switchblade collection, an old school one, you see them sitting with the blades out so that those springs aren't under tension, and, and that bothers me. I, I don't like that. Um, uh, you know, there's lots of other knives on the market that are still like that, and I just I, I don't know. I don't trust that as much as that. Uh, so this is great. I think this makes a wonderful EDC, and I, I can't believe it took me so long to to get my hands on an Ultratech because, truthfully, I think it belongs up there um, amongst uh, the the best of the best in terms of everyday carry folding knives. I mean, of course, in length for me, this nails it. Eight and a quarter inches is perfect. That's the same length as my Hinder. I love it. I kind of have this weird thing where I, I like knives between seven and three quarters and eight and a quarter despite this one being incredible at seven and a quarter it's mainly because of how you can get your hand all the way around it but this is a sweet spot for me and at three ounces it it's not going to make anybody mad in terms of weight and it's certainly not going to make anybody mad in terms of you know uh, uh the uh the profile here this is a very thin carry uh, uh silhouette so it's not going to take up a whole lot of room in your pocket. This is very friendly. It feels like a longer 940 when I'm holding it, Benchmade 940, just in terms of how, you know, not not tall this blade is, and it just kind of continues. The whole look just continues all the way down the handle. So as far as room in your pocket, it's simply just this. It carries pretty deep. The only thing that sticks up is this guy right here, but that's not a big deal. Not, not a big deal at all. They took all the... Uh, writing and stuff the serial number and the date off of the handle which i really really appreciate um i i love that it's just the logo now I, i'm happy with that they keep the date and the serial number on the pocket clip along with the microtech logo and then you know they've still got all the stuff there on the blade but um really nothing to complain about i i love the uh, swedge up top i love the fuller down here i love that the flats continue out and keep that blade nice and thick there towards the tip it's just an excellent everyday carry knife and uh, a blade style so whatever your taste uh, includes for the blade style you know take a look around because these things come in a, a, a massive uh, variation of finishes and blade styles and there's lots of stuff out there for everybody um, and then of course different colored handles and then you've got their signature series and then their customs and blah 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 um, great stuff uh, there's there's something out there for everybody so if you're considering this a massive thumbs up from me. There's really nothing to complain about. Um, your actuator switch, you know, whether or not this is easy for you to do, it, it's easy for me. Um, I've felt ones that are not quite as easy and, like that Truidon, and I had to oil it a little bit. Um, that's really the remedy for that. You put a tiny, tiny little bit of brake-free CLP or whatever uh, lubricant you like to use uh, right in there where the uh, switch moves up and down, and it should loosen that up a little bit. That's really the only other thing I hear people complain about. They say, oh, it's so hard to pull. You know, I got to turn this way. I got to use two hands. Just put some oil in there. It should be fine. Um, uh, but uh, that's pretty much it. I have no complaints with this knife. I think it's perfect. And uh, I, it comes very highly recommended by me. So anyways, if you enjoyed this video, please leave a like. And if you uh, would like to check out my other content, I do, of course, have lots of videos of other knives that are either expensive or inexpensive that I do or don't like. So check those out. And if you enjoy all my content, then please subscribe to my channel because there's definitely more coming. Thanks for watching and have a great day.